Welcome back to Footy Classified. Uh, we thought we'd just take the opportunity to divert slightly with Nathan Buckley here for the last time tonight. Well, this year anyway. Um, and that might be another talking point. <laughs> but um, we are going to talk about the role of the media and uh, football clubs particularly. And it came on the back of this. We showed this last week and it was a uh, vision of Jason Johannesson. And that's our man Mitch Cleary there who uh, is a doorstop or whatever you want to call it on his way back to the car. Well, there's interesting points made by Jason then. He said he owned up to the fact that he didn't handle it very well and that he owed his teammates and we got something out of it. Bucks, in the ad break, you didn't like it? No, I don't like the door stopping. And it happens at our at our footy club quite often. And, and as you see there, I mean, he's got his basically got his civilian clothes over his over his um, Bulldogs outfit. He's not representing the sponsors. He's, he's not on Bulldogs time. Um, he's clocked out. When he's walked out the back door of the Bulldogs, he's, he's clocked out. Um, that's I think that's an in, encringement is that the word? Encringement on, on, his, um, on his private and personal time. I reckon where you missed the mark on this is that the journalists don't like it either. Mm. And the clubs... I oh, know, I understand that. The clubs are at fault here, mm. yours among them, but all clubs, because what is wrong in 2017 with following the rest of the world and making your athletes available every day and actually talking? What, why do we need as a broader media, and I don't speak on behalf of the broader mm. media, but mm. it, it drives me nuts, this. Like... Clubs have got an obligation to their supporters, their fans, to communicate and articulate. This old adage of, I'm going to provide one player for you to speak at and we'll decide who it is, and yep. it's, just, it's just wrong. And clubs don't take enough accountability. They're trying to compete with their own media assets. And you, mm. you as a leader of your club and all coaches, could easily stop that. And throw the doors open for half an hour a day, let people ask what they want to ask. The AFL haven't mandated it. But if what do they, they, what what do they need happened? to? I hear that argument all if the time. If you want to find out what's going on at Collingwood, collingwoodfc.com.au, and we'll let you know what's going on at our club. Yeah, but that's part of the problem, because you're putting a controlled message out rather than an independent view of your footy club. As a big-time footy club, yep. the broader media is entitled to cover your club as, as freely as they like. And you, and all clubs, should make those players available more broadly, and you will stop that, that in a half that, that's That is disrespectful, though. But you've created do you, what, that what do you think? What do you think? What do you get out of those occasions? I think they're cringeworthy when you doorstop a player or a coach. Yeah, but then do something about it, Nathan. Like it's one thing to sit back and say that's not on, but actually create an environment. And the view that the AFL haven't mandated it, well, that, honestly, that doesn't cut it with me. Like, Why would how you hard is it? Our, to... our, our job is to communicate with our members and to bring them as close to the football club as we can because we don't have the the old. You're not rubbing skin with the old players the way that you might have 20, 30 years ago. There's no aftermatch like there used to be. So our, we um, communicate with our fans through our digital media, media and we try and make our players as, as accessible as possible. To, we have to yourself, plenty of though. people... No, no, to our supporters. You on are, your own are you asking the yeah, questions? Are you asking the questions that the rest of the footy world want to have answered? Well, our, our job isn't... Well, I, my job as a senior coach is not to increase our reach from a media perspective. My job is to prepare the team to play winning football. And if my players are uncomfortable walking into work because they're getting door stopped and they've got a camera shoved in then, their face, then fix that's not great. Open the doors well, up. We will. We'll, we'll get a car park where you guys can't get in <laughs> yeah. and, and that would be a lot better. But see, I, like, you're a revered figure in our game. Yeah. Why wouldn't you take no, that? And, even, and, mate, I feel uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable when someone tries to door stop me. It's not right. Don't do it. It shouldn't happen. But it's created by the clubs who have been restrictive no, in their no, access no, that they create. No, it's created by the competition that you guys have created for yourself. Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10, That's all right. of the footy that shows. Is, that is right. Try and, get a, try and get a grab that no one else is going to get. And then we have some value and we'll plug that to within an inch of its life. That is because true. Because have a look at this uncomfortable player who's been asked a question that he really but doesn't you, want to answer at this point. If we want him to answer it, we'll put him up. But you, you could take an, an industry position and help grow the game I'm by not, making the athletes more accessible that's, than what they are. Go and talk to um, head office about that, mate, and go and talk to the people at Collingwood that are in charge of that. That's not my charter. Would you be against that? As a senior coach, would you be against... I feel like we are, I th I feel like we are very accessible. Our players are accessible. But if it was... But if, how? Where? When? On, on, our on our terms. On our terms, mate. Not on yours. But what is the harm of it? What, what, I mean, you're a, a, a consumer of the world, only, of world the, the sport. Major it reason, happens all over the world. 
What, so the what, biggest door point, stopping? No, no, no. Accessibility. You guys, it's like TMZ. Like, no, if you go, no, if you want to have TMZ. a look, at, you look like TMZ. Take TMZ out of it, but the open accessibility is a worldwide, on much bigger scale than our. Uh, and you've seen it. Scale. You've been over and had a look at it. So, NBA. what is the downside of that? What are they earning? But how's it? Well, we're getting uh, we're, there. We live in a small <laughs> country, and we're all here to grow the game. It's actually against journalistic competitiveness. The less, as a journalist, I was back in the day, I haven't been for years, the less access the better. So it creates a competitive advantage if you think you're any good at it. The better thing for the game to do is to make and open the doors. And I'm really passionate about this because... Is that a paranoia about the media? Have you got an issue? I don't, I don't think the media can be trusted right, with now information. Ah, and now, now, I'm glad you raised this. Now we're getting the, the distrust between media and clubs is born out of lack of accessibility. No, it's, not because born out of, it's, born, it's born out of who you allow to be ah, to sit at the pinnacle of your of your media. You, you, you open the that. doors every day and you'll find people having a conversation, hopefully maturely like this, every day and turning up and discussing what they've written about you and what they haven't. And human relationships form. At the moment there's a breakdown of communication and relationships. There is. I'll put my players hat on. I couldn't trust um, the media to, to yeah, but how much time did you actually spend with them? Oh, I didn't I didn't want to. When you're an AFL footballer, you're yeah, not looking to do that. But all I'm saying is, Bucks, you've had a pretty tough year this year. You've had so much written about you, talked about you. So what's your overall perspective on the media? Well, I can, I can talk for yeah. ten minutes, twelve yeah. minutes in a press conference yeah. and I know the line that will be used. Yes. And it won't be representative of what I've said in the press mm. conference. Mm. And people don't have time and won't won't go to say the website to absorb the whole ten or twelve minutes of a post match or of a of a midweek press conference. Um, so the little grabs that you use are not always representative of reality, and the media is responsible for how you use those grabs and how you create reality because it's very far away from where it actually. So sits. have you had a situation this year, Bucks, where you believe you were taken out of context with anything you said? Every other week, mate. Every, every other week, and and. That does breed the distrust, and there are times when, um, if you can't control the message, look at look Bevo. We just had a look in the first segment about Bevo. I reckon he presents as well as any other coach going around, and we, this show, showed a couple of his grabs, saying that there was inconsistencies in his message. I reckon if you looked at his press conferences in in, in their entirety, you would see a really clear and concise and clean message that would cut across. It's just that he hasn't won as many. He's won three, two less games than he had at the same time last yeah. year. Three less games at the same time last year, and you don't get as much cash if you're not winning games. So, right so now. do you think that that play on at the start of this show was not a true representation of the messaging of Luke? It clearly happened, mm. but it was so not, it was edited not and balanced? it was edited for effect. I, mean, I got no doubt it was edited for effect. You could have played, you could have played three lines from the same interviews that were that gave a totally different reality. That, but, so that so you you have the, the integrity of, of how it's reported is important. But, but that's not the not story all. though, is it? I mean, the story is they're struggling as a footy club. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. we go. Why are they struggling? Yeah. Okay, then we go yeah. back and have a look at the yeah. messaging and, yeah. and work out and try and work out whether there are consistencies or inconsistencies. The biggest cut through that you get, I've, I think, in journalism is by drawing on the heartstrings and and finding an emotive angle. Is mm. that not right? Yeah, well, and, and we, we had this that might not always be the accurate. It might not always be an accurate assessment of what's going on. But you've you've been leaving aside your view of that. You've been part of it. Like you've done worked on Channel Seven as an expert. Yeah. You're here tonight, clearly yeah. for a reason. Like yeah, to, I've become a bit more of a cynic over the last five years. You talked about the, the pinnacle of reporting. I mean, you got an issue. I don't want to go anywhere specifically, but there, like, there are some big media organisations around and I reckon we've got to be careful about who we, what type of characters we have at the top of those. And they're at the, they're at the, at the pinnacle of your industry and I think we're losing respect for the industry because of the people yeah, that, we, that you're putting on a pedestal. But you're, there's clearly a hint of Robbo in that answer. You're using the rough time you've had with him as, no, a, as a small snapshot of your view of the media industry. No, no, it's, oh, no, it's not about me. But who well, are you not... talking about then, Bucks? You've thrown something. That's, that's a big statement you've made. The, who, we, we, we're talking Herald Sun. We're talking The Age. Well, there's there's quite a few ambul ambulance chasers around in this yeah. industry at the mm. moment looking for that grab. Now, Mitch, that, as you said, Mitch was um, finding that that uh, bit from Jason Johannesson. He's doorstopped me at times, and I've been uncomfortable. I haven't wanted to give some of the comments, but I'm trying to be respectful. I've had a few comments off camera. Well, I'm not, I've been with my kids 
and that grab has been used on TV. I just, I find it distasteful, disrespectful. I don't mind when a guy comes, Ken, do you mind if we get a grab? If I go, no, that's fine. But I know that his boss is kicking his ass, so you need to get okay. a grab here. You, well, if it, it might be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, 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 and, 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 it's, and you're, talk, you're actually, yep. you are talking about lining your pockets too. The more open it is, the more that you can get across, the more um, your um, it your has time zero is worth. commercial benefit. It has a benefit for the game, which everyone benefits from. So it's altruistic, mate, that you're... And you want this. you're assuming that, like, like, using that example, that Jason Johannesson's objective is the same as the footy clubs. Maybe he... In, I'm not saying... I'm just a bad example. But maybe he wanted to actually... He had the choice to say, nah, I'm out. Or he could stop and talk and talk about being accountable for his and that, actions. That's, and the, and, and that, the club might not want him to do that, but he might have felt passionately about it as an athlete to do and so. And right there highlights the difficulty of keeping things on track as a football club because there are so many moving parts. Managers become an issue. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, every time you pick a side, there are 22 happy blokes and there are 23 unhappy blokes. And the 23 unhappy blokes only have to say something. The manager like, oh, I'm not enjoying my footy, I'm not getting a game, I'm not getting a fair go, coaches kick my ass. In the end, that's what you... Then, then all of a sudden, you've got a story, haven't you? It's and it, but it's outlier. But it's outlier. I'm glad we did. I, I respect you, your views. No, I, I, do I, I disagree with them slightly, but I love the fact that you've tabled them. We're well, coming from different yeah, places, we are. mate. We are. No doubt. Yeah. Welcome back to Footy Classified. Nathan Buckley, only two segments with us. Uh, Going out with a bang, guys. Returns to the coaching uh, uh, seat at the Collingham Footy Club. So we thought we'd just uh, clear up a couple of things from last week, Bucks, the mm. chat we had last week, which was interesting and instigated a lot of debate. A lot of it was around your answer to the question about the fact that it wasn't merely a fact of whether or not Collingwood would recommit yep. to you, whether you know, it was a two way street, I think was your yep. description. So straight up. Do you want to coach Collingwood next year? Absolutely. Right. So what was the basis of the two-way talk? Can you perhaps expand on that a little bit? Uh, when I was talking about playing finals, it was actually more an expectation of what I what I believe the club should be aiming for. It wasn't... And it's been framed up as the, as the, the start, end, middle and end point for any anything to do with my tenure. Um, my, my decision has to be made... Well, the club's decision and the decision on who coaches any in, in, sits in any senior coach position has to be on getting the best out of yep. um, the available talent that you have, um, putting that together and performing in a manner that's going to win you games of footy. And you said you were confident that you had... Absolutely. I, I, think, you know, I think the evidence is there of recent times. So we've, got, we've got ten games that we need to focus on in the short term sure. and one in particular against Port Adelaide on Saturday um, that we need to continue... Um, the solid brand of footy that we've that we've been able to um, uh, roll out, um, we're going to start winning games. I mean, that's that's what my intent is. But the ball back right, in right now. Court. Well, in, no, in the well, look, it'll be a discussion. Court. I mean, everyone thinks that that you that, that the senior coach is just the, the beck and call of the club. I mean, in the end, it is a, it is a it's an arrangement. Sure. It's it's a partnership. Yep. Um, I mean, you think back. You know, days gone by. I mean, coaches walk away if they think that they don't have the respect of the players, or they don't think that they've got the, yeah, sure. the attention of the players, or they don't think they're getting the best out of the players. But you it's, don't it's a, think that now. Well, no, it's a, it's a character thing. I th if I believe that I am, uh, and I have a, I have an assessment of how I'm going inside as well, and sure. whether people are responding to to me, whether it's players or or coaches or staff at the football club, whether I'm in, whether I'm aligned with where the club is going. I mean, that's that's all things that that need to be part but, of the discussion. But just a last one, you, you think you've done enough to get another go? We, we, look, we've already done this. Yep. We've already done it. And in the end, it doesn't matter what I say or do, it matters on the performances that we, yep. put, we put out on the park, not only in the first part of the year, but in the back half Bucks, the can I ask you about the recruitment of Chris Mayne? Uh, yep. There's a lot of rumour and innuendo out there that it was a Gubby Allen decision and you weren't fully across the decision to bring Mayne into the club. Look, we have a list management um, panel, um, and part of that is working out whether you keep a pick and and go to draft, or whether you look at a free agent um, and how you how you use your salary cap. Um, the list manager is mainly the guy that pulls together that cap in, in association with the the director of footy. Um, do you sit on that committee? Yeah, I do. And but it's, do you get a, a big say? dollars? Dollars aren't a big part of that discussion. It's more about. But can you what say sort of I, talent, I want what Chris sort of or I don't want Chris for? or that type well, of thing? Plenty of players get discussed. Um, Did you tick him off though, Bucks? Well, yeah, I, absolutely. I was yes, part so. of the panel that was that was on that, okay. and and in the end. We are uh, similar to Bryce Gibbs. Two two games into this season was 
that, that was pillory, that decision. But um, in the end, Maney's not going as well as we thought that he might. He's taking longer to settle. Um, he's played 180 games, he's played finals, he's kicked 40 goals twice you know, in two seasons. Um, I'm coaching Maney the way that I'm coaching every other player on the list to try and get the best out of them. Um, Daniel Wells has been a little bit hit or miss with injury, but I still think that there's plenty to play out there. You know, the, the competition is so tight and so marginal. If we have Daniel Wells up at the right time, and that's still an if, but I think he'll, he'll make a significant difference to our best footy, and that's, that's why we picked him. Last one. You say you think Maine can still play a part in the rest of the season? We're absolutely committed to no, Chris no, no. Maine and finding out what his best football can be. I understand that. He w he'll have a say in it, and the quality of our football and the, bl the players that he's competing against for the same position will have a say in that. So there's 45 players yeah. that I now coach, and I give them equal opportunity to play their role for the club, regardless of where they've been, how long they've played. I understand all that. And that's, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the reality of the situation. You're active on social media, and we'll talk a bit more about that a little bit later on. How would you have reacted to Bug yesterday when he, uh, in his mind, lightheartedly said, you're ready alongside Jack Watts to Johannesson hours before the game? So in your mind, it's not lighthearted. In oh, my mind? Yeah. No, I'm, I, I loved it. I thought yeah. it was just a bit of fun. Yeah. And well, I, th footy. I thought Simon Goodwin handled it really well afterwards, but... I'll ask you, would we be perceiving it differently if Melbourne had have lost? No doubt. No, and had yeah. Tom Bug struggled, then he would be coughing it left, right and centre today. So yeah. so the result would therefore change the intent yeah. of the actual photo, which is yeah. which is flawed. Would you have because, said something to him before the game, though, if you were coaching? Uh, well, I don't reckon I would have been on Instagram a half hour before. You would have known about that because the Bulldogs knew about it and they went for him. And yeah. Melbourne well, what are they doing on Instagram an hour before Yeah, but the somebody game? in that system... Learned that it had happened, and yeah. you, you didn't like it, did you? No, I, I didn't, I'm not for yeah. it. No, I was a coach, um, you know, like you, like you are, Bucks. I mm. would have not brought it up before the game, but I'd mm. go to him, and I've been told Simon Goodwin's told him, mm. "Don't be going down that track again." Yeah, well, I, I, I think Goody handled it really well, and that is, that we want to be a, a, a respectful, humble club, mm. and that we want to continue to grow in that mould. Um, and this may not be totally reflective of that. Um, and as we gain further success, that that's how we want to be perceived and that's yeah. how we want to act. Yeah, now, that's, that's, that's good leadership. He gambled, Tui. Mm. He gambled and he won. So yeah. we sit here tonight. A bit of personality in the game. Like, no, 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 no,